Hey, what's up, Radical Squad? My name is Delmarche Walker. Welcome back to my channel, and I hope everyone is having a great day today. This video is going to be kind of different. It's, I'm probably going to be all over the place. I'm kind of, it's just my thought, my the, the thoughts that's running through my head, and I just want to kind of like get them out there. Um, first, I want to start off by showing a video. And then I will come back on and kind of talk to you. The desert's expansion is related to China's rapid economic growth, driven by its increasing middle class. With more people consuming goods, the demand for disposable chopsticks has grown exponentially, leading to the use of 1.3 million cubic meters of timber every year, according to China's Environment Ministry. But illegal logging has led to deforestation removing the roots that previously held the soil together and taking water from the atmosphere. This has led to soil erosion and a drier climate, causing a high ecological cost. The rising demand for food and other resources has also led to more farmers switching to livestock rearing, resulting in an overgrazing and other associated problems. This expansion eats away at space that was once fit for agriculture and creates unbridled sandstorms that batter cities near the edge of the desert. What's most concerning is that desertification shows little sign of slowing down. For years, China's desert spread at an annual rate of more than 1,300 square miles. Climate change and human activities have accelerated desertification, and nearly 20% of China is now desert. Drought across the northern region is getting worse. One recent estimate suggests that China has 21,000 square miles more desert than in 1975. As the Gobi Desert expands, it is merging with two other deserts to form a vast sea of sand that could be uninhabitable. Villages have been lost, and the encroaching deserts threaten to destroy farmland and bury villages, forcing people to abandon their homes. To combat the steady march of the sand, local governments and residents who live on the edge of the deserts plant trees to block the wind and stabilize the soil. For example, Ningxiahui Autonomous Region in northwestern China, surrounded by three significant deserts, has been fighting desertification for over six decades. As of 2010, 57% of its territory, or 2.97 million hectares, have been affected by desertification. How has this desertification impacted China and the Chinese people? Desertification is a significant issue affecting both people and the environment in China. The impact of this phenomenon has led to the shifting of food production zones, causing crops to fail, livestock to die, and water sources to dry up. However, the effects of desertification are wider than agriculture and water resources. It also hinders progress towards sustainable development and forces entire communities out of their homes turning them into climate refugees. As a result, many of these displaced people are forced to seek refuge in other countries or communities, which could eventually lead to resource-driven wars for survival in response to food insecurity and water scarcity. Okay, so as you can see in that video, China um, is having an issue just like we are with, you know, making sure we're able to produce Food and have enough land to produce food, not just for humans, but also for the animals that um, we are consuming. And China, part of China's solution is to look outside of China uh, for land, just like they have land here in America that they're using as farmland. They're not farming that land to feed Americans. They're farming that land to send the food back to China to feed their people. And so because they have that issue, as you can see, China is not letting additional people come in, unlike with America. In America, you hear them say all the time that there's going to be a food shortage. We're not going to have enough food. You know, we're the economy this and the economy that. But we steady have a border where people are constantly crossing the border. These people are going to need somewhere to stay. These people are going to need food to eat and different things like that. So as a president, it doesn't make sense to say to your, to your nation, nation, to the country, hey, 
y'all ain't gonna have enough food to eat, but we're gonna add more people to the problem instead of really trying to find a solution. And you do see with you know certain people they are looking for other food sources. I have been posting a lot on my Instagram um, of different videos I'm coming across where you're seeing that they're saying, hey, um, bugs, it's okay to eat bugs because bugs have a lot of protein. You know, it's nutritious. So if you have bugs added to your food, it's fine. And um, also there, um, I showed a video with salmon. Like salmon is one of the, the top fish that a lot of people eat because it's very healthy. But then they're, you know, genetically modifying salmon now. And then even with that, they're not putting that information on the package. So you're not knowing that you're getting genetically modified salmon. You're thinking you're getting something healthy because it is salmon, you know, because they are overfishing there. It's just everything is, is dwindling, dwindling away because there's, we're, we're becoming overpopulated. You know, that's just something throughout the world. I did videos, I posted videos about that. And so with these people coming in, they're adding to the problem. We don't know who's coming in to our, to our country. That's one, you know, it's, it's like a lot of different things. We don't know who's coming into the country. We don't know, you know, what their intentions are when it comes to America. But at the same time, the border is still open and doesn't make any sense. And I have talked about, you know, part of that is drug trafficking that American is benefiting from. Some of that is sex trafficking, which American is benefiting that from. Um, with these people, they're going to need money. And so sometimes the way they can get money is by donating their blood, donating their plasma, which America make money from because you can sell blood, you can sell plasma. And what they they asking these people, like with blood, you don't get money for donating blood. But if you donate plasma, they will pay you. But the money they make on the back end is a lot more than the people make up front. And they really don't go through a, a true betting process. They just want these people to donate their plasma and they sell it. I did a video about that. It's a lot going on with the elites as far as with um, the young blood where they get next to someone who's younger than them and have a blood transfusion. I talked about that in the video. So the other thing that's been going through my mind that I just want to kind of touch on, like I said, this is just my thought process, the way I'm thinking, that um, you can kind of kill two birds with one stone because I, I did another video where I talked about population control. So with the elites, a lot of those people are wicked. And a lot of times you see them, you know, they're drinking blood. Um, and then sometimes you see them when, when, you know, they look as if they're eating people. And like I said, I know this might start to sound crazy. But what if they're getting into cannibalism? Because like I said, a lot of times you see them having dinner party where they have people on a table and it's almost like they're eating, you know, they're eating food off these people. So what if the next step is actual cannibalism where they're actually eating people? And so now, because if you're getting all this, because let me kind of go back. If you're genetically modifying food, if you're you know, like with these um, Beyond Meat and stuff like that, they're getting food that has like blood in it. It takes, you have to have something to create something. You can't create anything out of this thin air. So you're still going to need something in order to create this fake meat. You're still going to need chemicals. You're still going to need process, how to process that. So that means you're still going to need what's growing out there in the world, what's out there in the world. You're still going to need that. But if we're running low on growing this, if we're running low on growing that, if we're running low, then eventually you're not going to have those things that you need to make fake food. So if these people are getting into cannibalism. They have a, a, an array of people coming across the border 
that you don't know who they are. They're starting to give these people um, cards. Uh, I think they have money on the cards and they also give them, them cell phones, but they know they're not using those cell phones to check in to go to court like they're supposed to. But you can track people through cell phones. So what if they're using that as the way to track these people that's coming across the border? You know, it's like you have to give some type of information about yourself and you really don't know what information they're asking from these people. So could they be using that to harvest organs? Could they be using that to get these people to do tests on them, to do some type of test on them? Or if they're using them to say, hey, you know, we can go ahead and hunt these people and eat these people. So you really don't know what's going on um, out there. Like I said, I know it sounds crazy and everything like that, but I don't trust the government and I don't put anything um, past evil people. And when you see how people, you know, when they're really willing to hurt their own children, why would cannibalism be so far away? You know, in the Bible, you've seen when it was famine time, and this one lady, you know, it was two women that had um, baby boys. And one woman said to the other, hey, let's go ahead and cook your baby, boil your baby, and eat your baby today. And then tomorrow we'll eat my baby. So the woman went ahead, her, her own child, killed her child, cooked the child, ate the child. And the next day she was asking the other woman, the other woman hid her baby. She was like, no, we're, we're not going to eat my child. So you got this in the Bible. And like I said, there's nothing new in the world. So I would not put it past people to start eating people as a ritual, as a way to have real meat instead of having this, this fake processed meat. Because even when you see, you know, it's like I see videos where they're showing chicken that got cancer in it, but they're selling the, the, the meat or they have beef or other animals that got cancer but they're still processing that meat and still sending it out to people. So if they really don't care about that, what would make them not eat another human being? What would make them get to the point where they won't eat a, another human being? I know like back in the days or when you've seen these movies, some of these people ate people as a ritual because they felt like they, they was gonna get, you know, they, they, they're gonna get some type of power from them. They're gonna get something from them. So they would eat, you know, if they, if it was a warrior and that warrior was a great warrior, they ate that warrior because they felt like, okay, now I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get his power. And so, um, like I said, I know this video sounds probably crazy or I, I seem like I'm crazy, but like I said, I have trust issues <laughs> and I definitely don't trust the government. And I truly understand that we're fighting against evil. It's not necessarily the people themselves, but it's the people that are, are allowing themselves to be used and manipulated by Satan. So um, I just wanted to put that out there. Like I said, these are the thoughts that's running through my head and I just want to share them with you. But I hope everyone is having a great day. Peace.